Selamat pagi Bapak-bapak dan ibu-ibu sekalian, hadirin sekalian. Aloha. Aloha. I'd like to welcome all of you to our uh, event today. Uh, I just want to assure you number one is that our vision for Chamber of Commerce is, is uh, uh, really twofold here. One is that uh, we do want to do want to be of uh, enormous assistance uh, however we can uh, in in uh, building partnerships between the business community in the Hawaiian Islands and uh, with uh, compatible or similar companies uh, in Indonesia uh, for uh, bilateral trade purposes. Uh, and and in, in the business community definition, uh, we do include our uh, defense industry as a business here in Hawaii. Um, and uh, uh, for that reason, we're very honored to have General Lee come with us today. And by defense industry, I mean consultants as well as um, um, those folks that work behind what we call the chain link fence. You're all part, uh, and we, we want to include you uh, in what we're doing here. And uh, the other part of the mission of the, inter the uh, Hawaii Indonesia Chamber of Commerce is to pr promote general awareness of uh, developments in Indonesia as uh, a robust democracy uh, with in just incredibly improving uh, statistics in terms of uh, corruption and economic development and strong growth as a, as a real leader coming on very strong in the Asia Pacific region. So welcome to all of you. Please join me in welcoming General Lee. Good morning. Salamat pagi. Salamat pagi. One day I got a phone call and uh, and, and, uh, and, 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 and a letter from Admiral uh, Fallon that said, hey, General, the Republic of Indonesia wants to be in this state partnership program with the National Guard and have requested with personal, <clears throat> with a big P, they want the state of Hawaii. I go, oh, my goodness, 240 million in Indonesia, <laughs> 1.2 million in Hawaii. I better check with the governor. Governor Lingo, I have this request from the commander of Pacific Command and that Indonesia wants us. And in a millisecond, the governor said, of course, let's go. <laughs> I says, Excuse me, and that's when I found out that uh, the governor's past relationship again with uh, Indonesia, having visited Indonesia many times and just loved the, the, the people and what's going on there, um, said, okay, Hawaii, let's go. I said, yes, ma'am, you're the boss. So I, I called uh, Admiral Fallon and says, we're all in. Well, this was the summer of 2007, but I wanted to show that uh, the state of Hawaii, but in particular, our state uh, civil defense was already working with Indonesia um, a lot earlier than that uh, due to a horrific uh, natural catastrophe. And one of our partners in state civil defense is the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. So I want you to kind of take a look at this here. This is December 2007. So we had only seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, and what's not seen is one way down here off of Chile. This is the rim of fire, the earthquake zone, and we, the state of Hawaii, needed early warning system. DART stands for Deep Ocean Assessment and Reporting Tsunami Boys. So they're tethered to the bottom of the ocean and they can sense that pulse wave and the word gets out to Hawaii and elsewhere, Japan um, and, and Chile. That was our network then. Watch out, the big one's coming. Well, the big one came in December of 2004 in a region where all the scientists said, not to worry, <coughs> nothing big happens over here. Next slide, please. Okay, and 250,000 estimate Indonesians perish with the earthquake off of Aceh. So between 2004 and 2010, we now have 51 deep ocean assessment and reporting tsunami boys to report us, actually to cover the United States. But a lot of people don't know is that it's all run out of the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center here, and the next move is a worldwide network. Um, each one of these instrumentations costs $15 million to build and install. So you can get the magnitude of the investment here and yet, other countries like Indonesia, Australia, Chile have 
bellied up to the bar and have also provided money, of course, to their, with their local interest, but tied into our global network to provide early warning throughout the Pacific. Okay, so really the Department of Defense and our department started earlier by necessity in 2004 to start working with the Indonesians. Actually, I think there's a story, Representative Ward, that we went on our first trip to meet the Defense Minister Sudarsono to uh, cinch the deal for the Hawaii and Indonesia State Partnership. And along with us was Dr. Chip McQuarrie, the head of the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. And he was like the national hero for setting up this uh, network. And it was not put online really until 2009. I know the Bali system was uh, energized in 2009 and in uh, 2008, other parts of the Indonesian uh, network. And I can't put it on the map, but you can bet um, within the Indonesian island chain, uh, they are sub-tsunami warning uh, buoys tied into to, to the network. Okay, next slide, please. The reason why I show this is, <clears throat> well, I'm glad I'm head of civil defense now with technology. And in February of this past year, when we asked the people of Hawaii, if you were living in a tsunami inundation zone and Waikiki, the tourists, please evacuate because we sense an eight or 10 footer coming in. Well, we actually had about one to two feet on, on the big island. but. When all the data is analyzed, this is the strength of the recent Chile tsunami, uh, earthquake and tsunami of 9.5. We lucked out, passed about 350 to 400 miles south of the island chain. Okay, but we didn't know that. Okay, all we knew was almost to the minute we knew the arrival of the tsunami wave. Better safe than sorry, because next slide. This is the same Chile earthquake 1960, where, how many lives did we lose in Hilo? Now you can see, Hawaii did <coughs> bear the front of the strength of the, the Chilean uh, tsunami out output. So, I can't, we can't, you know, as scientists, we can't really explain why this one went up further north and the other one went south, but, um, you know, it's the nature of the blast and, and, and how it's pointed out. So we were uh, absolutely lucky and really uh, for all of you that uh, participated, um, I'm just elated that um, <clears throat> FEMA and the National Emergency uh, Management Agency in the United States gave Hawaii an A rating for performance. You know, um, the tourists evacuated up to the higher floors, we didn't have traffic jams. There was only one Yahoo in, in, in the water. Uh, and uh, I, I thank the, the hotel managers for throwing the party on the upper floors and bringing people in so that the tourists really didn't mind this interruption of a, of a couple of hours. Because prior to February 2010, my recollection of early warning tsunami was 1994, gridlock, over 200 Yahoos not understanding the tsunami wave, wanting to ride the big wave. <laughs> and, you know, so I'm glad that got erased by, and this is the proper performance uh, by, by the state. Okay, next slide. So, <clears throat> Mount Marapi made the news again, but uh, as part of our engagement with Indonesia, uh, we work on disaster preparedness and disaster response. And we let the Indonesians pick the topic. Last year, they wanted to have an exercise and a discussion about catastrophic wildfires. Hawaii? Oh, oh. I, mean, we, I mean, we get nervous when half an acre burns. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, but they wanted, that was the topic, so we, we complied. 